Welcome to CityLine Online. We're so excited that you chose to spend your Sunday here with us. If you don't know anything about us, know that this is the perfect place for imperfect people. There's three ways to engage with us on a Sunday. One is watching online on our Facebook, YouTube, or CityLine app. Two is to join or watch a host party at your house. And three is to be here on campus with us at either 5.30 or 7.30 p.m. as long as you register. Also, I hope you guys enjoy today's service and engage with us in our worship and our intentional teaching. Now let's celebrate together. Hello, City Line family. I hope you're all doing great because this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord in this place. So I invite you to get on your feet, put your hands together and let's give him some worship because he deserves it. He's worthy of it all.
you have made whatever comes i won't complain for all my hope is in your name and now your joy awaits my praise i give thanks for all you have done and i will sing of your mercy and your love your love is unfailing lord i am grateful and i will sound you brought me out you set my feet on higher ground so here i stand you are my God, your faithfulness, my solid rock. I give thanks for all you have done, and I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing, Lord, I What's happening in City Line, friends and family? We are so thankful that you are tuning in to one of our online experiences, and we pray that you are already enjoying yourself. You know, today, as we continue to engage in this time of worship, we wanted to kind of pause and just switch things up just a little bit. Uh, there's several things that are happening in our in our culture, in our community, that surround us as, as families. And one of those things is this idea of back to school. Uh, everyone is returning to school, but school looks much different this year. Uh, is not going as many had planned. And there's, there's lots of concern, there's lots of angst, there's lots of unknowns. So every year we always wanna make sure that we pause to just pray together, that we, we speak blessing, that we, we speak into the situation by the power of Jesus Christ, knowing who he is, knowing that he is with us. We call that our, our back to school blessing, where we pray over our, our teachers, we pray over our parents, we pray over our students. So with the help of some of our church leaders, uh, we want to just spend the next few moments with you praying over you. So I'd like to invite Pastor Troy to please lead us out. Uh, Heavenly Father, as we just go to you in prayer for, for parents and, and teachers and caregivers and 
aunts and uncles and grandparents and, and those who are stepping up and stepping in to fill a role to, to care for and to lead our students, God, and our children. We pray, God, for, for wisdom, uh, for clarity, and for discernment, God. God, we pray that, that you would give them supernatural wisdom, God, as, as, they, as they lean into this season that's unprecedented, God, with so many unknowns that they would still be able to navigate and to, to, to lead in a good direction, God. And we pray for, for peace in their hearts, God, peace that, that comforts them, peace that, that, that resides with them even when they don't understand everything that's going on, peace that helps them to continue to trust in you, God. God, I pray that you give them all peace to be able to love and lead well in a season that can bring so many challenges and barriers and so much tumult, God. We just ask that you be with them, God, that you cover them, God, for all that that is before them, God, and for the things that have happened up to now, God, and, and for rest, God. I pray that they find rest for their soul, that they find a healthy rhythm as they go through this seasons of ups and downs, God, but at the end of the day, they're stayed with you and they're fixed on you. God, although so many things are, are different, God, so many things have changed, we know one thing remains the same, is that you are with us and that you love us, God. I pray that we hold on to that and that they're reminded of that, God, so they can love and lead well, even in this season, God. We thank you. In the name of your son, we ask these things. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this new season, this fresh start. And Lord, even though it looks different for our middle schoolers and our high schoolers and even our college students that we pray that they just know they can find peace God that they can find strength in you and that ultimately that they can push through anything that's thrown at them Lord we just pray for uh, resources and people to surround them that they can walk with these students as they step into this unknown season of having classes online or whatever that looks like Lord we just pray for strength let them just know that they are not by themselves but there are many who are going through this and many who are along with them through that process Lord we just pray for peace we pray for hope we pray for so many new things as they step into this world just give them um, what they need in this season and, and guide them through whatever phase of life they're going in but Lord we pray over this next semester that it is meaningful and that they're able to learn well and, and grow into who you want them to be, God. Lord, thank you for the students as they jump into the season, and thank you for just your continuous love and, and always your support. Father, we thank you for our children. We thank you for um, the joy that's inside of their hearts that even in this um, pandemic, Father, and all the constant change, Father God, we know that you remain the same, Father, and we thank you that we can rest on that in this new season, Father, and that kids can find hope and joy, Father God, in your peace and your love, Father God, even in their homes as they are learning virtually or they're learning um, at their school, wherever they are, Father God, that they know that you are with them and that you will never leave them or forsake them, Father. I thank you for um, doing these things for your glory, for your honor, and for your name's sake. Amen. So Jesus, we lift all things up to you. We lift our, our families, our students, Lord, our schools, our teachers. God, we lift it all up to you. Father, I know that this is just a, a difficult season. God, even outside of school and all the changes that that brings, God, in our communities, in our culture, in our world, God, there's just so much going on. Father, there's a, a divisive political season, God. There is racial unrest. Father, there's pandemic concerns. Lord, there's all these things that, that none of us ever thought we would find ourselves in in this moment. But Father, I fully believe, Lord, that it is our chance to now step up and shine bright as the body of Christ, Lord, as those who love you, those who are called by your name to display something different to the world around us. Father, Lord, knowing that, that justice, Lord God, and that compassion, Lord, and that love and that grace, Lord, those are, are biblical examples that we're pursuing and choosing to follow. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, over our communities. I pray over our church, Lord. I pray, God, your prayer, Jesus, that you had for your church, that we would be united, that we would be one, just as you and the Father are one. Father, I pray that you would come against the divide, Lord God, from whatever direction it might be coming from. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would come against, Lord God, the picking and choosing of sides, Lord God, and Lord, that we would see each other, God, Lord, for who we are, Lord, our true identity that comes from you, Lord, as a child of God, loved by you, cared for by you, Lord God, called out by you, Jesus. Lord, I pray, Father, that we would, would unite, that we would link arms, Father, Lord, that we would love one another, Lord, that your grace and that your mercy would abound in all things. 
Lord, I speak blessing over our church. I speak blessing over our families. I speak blessing over our community. God, we need you more than ever before. So Father, we just invite you in to do what only you can do. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, God, that as we've said, you are with us. You've not forgot about us. You've not left us. You are with us. So Father, continue to move in and through us. And we thank you for it. We give you all glory, honor, and praise today. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, thank you so much for joining with us in that intentional time of prayer. We are expecting an incredible school year and for great things to come in Jesus' name. Let's continue to worship God as we sing this next song together. As we continue uh, in moments of worship, the song talks about coming back to the Father, but not just coming back to Him, running back to Him. And what the Word of God tells us is that when we draw close to God, He draws close to us. And just know that He's actually running towards us as well. Let's worship Him. I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. And I see
Lord Jesus. Father, we run to you. We run into your arms, Lord Jesus. And what an awesome sight it is to see you running towards us, Lord Jesus. No matter how far we've wandered and how far we've distanced ourselves from you, Remember your loving kindness and your love and your faithfulness. We're reminded what a wonderful, awesome Father that we have. And we run back to you, Lord Jesus. And you welcome us with open arms, God. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for your love, for your mercy for your patience, for your faithfulness. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to worship you. I want to continue worshiping you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just sit in this moment of worship right now. I run to the Father, fall into grace. Done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend. So I run to the Father again and again. I run, I run to the Father, fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart found a surgeon. So found a friend, so I run to the Father again. Let's sing it again. I run to the Father. I run to the Father, fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend. So I run to the Father again. I run to the Father. I run to Fall into grace I'm done with the hiding No reason to wait My heart found a surgeon My soul found a friend So I run to the Father Again and again And again and again Oh, oh, oh Again and Fam, we have a lot of exciting things that are going on and we would love for you to tag someone in the chat or share this feed and reach out to some people who are around you. And if you feel impacted by the ministry that's going on here at CityLine Church at all, feel free to give online at citylineonline.org or on our CityLine app. Let's see what else is going on. Pandemic or not, our God is great and He deserves our praise. We here at CityLine are going to come together on September 13th to put on Worship Weekend live and online. We'll see you guys there. Hey, what's up City Line family? I don't know if you know this or not, but the church, the church is alive and well. And there are people consistently taking next steps in their faith. And we're excited about that because that means baptism weekend is coming up. Yes, you heard me correct. Even in the middle of a pandemic, we're talking about safe, socially distanced, well taken care of baptisms where you can take a next step in your faith. It's September 13th. If you've been on the fence, if you've been thinking about it, if you've been wondering what is my next step since I've given my life to Jesus, 
I would say that that's baptism. And our question is, what are you waiting for? In fact, don't wait. Sign up today. You can sign up at citylineonline.org or you can email baptism at citylineonline.org. We'll get you connected. We'll get you plugged in and ready to go down in Jesus' name and you'll come up never the same. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Alan and I get to be one of the pastors here at City Line Church. And I'm excited today because I get to welcome you back to the Culture Kitchen. Now, what's amazing is we're already in week five of this incredible series. And you know what that means? That means we've had four weeks of incredible meals. We've shared conversation, connection, and community, all Christ-centered around the table. And it's been an amazing journey so far. So you're gonna love what we have for you today. And you know what, we're gonna eat this and it looks and it smells Amazing. I know you can't smell it, but trust me, this is going to be fantastic. But before we get the chance to eat this stuff, I want to let you have the opportunity to meet a few of my friends. Hi, everyone. My name is Sydney, and I'm part of the team here at City Line. And like Alan said, we are here with our Culture Kitchen, and we have some amazing food to try. And as we've been talking about, um, this week is celebration. And what better way to celebrate than with some good old soul food? So I'm here with my friend Nisha. Um, she's here and she's going to tell us a little bit about what she's made and what we're going to be eating. Hi you guys, I'm so happy to be here. Um, so what we have is just a little fruit here, some potato salad, some ribs, and my personal favorite, mac and cheese. I think it's about to be my personal favorite too. Um, are there any special ingredients or what, what, what kind of stuff's inside of there? Um, basically three cheeses, um, my favorite Kobe Jack cheese that Ooh. kind of just <laughs> set it off and a little secret uh, that I got because this is actually my mother's recipe. Oh. So a little secret is you use just a little bit of onion, just oh. a very little bit. Well, there you go. And now I got to be honest, I growing up, I haven't had a lot of soul food, right? Our food had a lot of ketchup and salt, right? That's kind of how we <laughs> rolled. But so this looks incredible. I'm excited to dive in. Um, and how about you guys? You ready to eat? I yes, am so ready. ready. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Well, we have our food here and I'm, I'm ready to eat this mac and cheese, but I think before I start uh, filling my mouth with food, I gotta know, is there, is there a story behind this besides the amazing ingredients? Well, this is my mother's recipe. Um, I'm pretty much the only one that can get it just quite almost like she makes it. Um, it's three cheeses. You can actually use more. One time I used five cheeses, but it was a little too cheesy. Um, I don't know if it wow. can be too cheesy, but. It was Way cheese. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I use a uh, Kobe Jack cheese, um, a sharp cheddar, and then on top a mild cheddar. So and then I layered it, so it just kind of like sat. So it kind of looks like mac pie, mm -hmm. but it's baked. Oh, mac that's cheese. good. Mac and you cook, you cook this for special occasions all the time. How, how do you guys usually special enjoy occasions, this? Special um, occasions, cookouts, um, our holiday parties, or on Sundays, especially after church. Um, which usually dinner is already done and then after church everybody goes you know to my mother's or to my house now and we just have a ball pig out and watch some TV and maybe take a nap <laughs> afterwards because sounds a lot like my mac and cheese yeah. <laughs> equals nap <laughs> uh, yeah well it sounds like a celebration and definitely mac and cheese does get you a little sleepy so I can totally relate um, it actually makes me think of celebrations I have with my family and Usually Christmas we have gumbo, which is like 
It's not Christmas unless we have gumbo, yeah, yeah. and it brings a family together. Usually, you know, uh, cousins and uncles and aunts that I haven't seen the whole year. You know, like that is what draws everyone to my mom's house. So, um, and we just kind of catch up and celebrate. You know, the year we've had. So, yeah. What about you? That's so cool. And you know what's interesting? Like you talked about this idea of Sunday lunch and getting together afterwards. Um, so I, I have a memory similar to that, which I want to share, but the first celebration that popped into my mind has got to be my wedding, right? So that was amazing. It was fun, but we were so busy hanging out with everybody and celebrating, we didn't actually eat the food, right? So it was kind of, I know, we had we picked out all this great stuff. So that might be the biggest miss I had is, is not enjoying the food at my wedding, but it was still an amazing time. But Sundays growing up, every other Sunday, we used to get to get probably similar like what you guys did. And we got together as a family, only it wasn't like just uh, my immediate family, it was my dad's whole branch of the family. And my dad, right, he's got seven siblings. Oh, okay, wow. Which means, yeah, eight total. So he's between his sisters and sister-in-laws, that means I got seven aunties, right? And they all take turns cooking these meals for us. And what's interesting, or what's amazing, and, well, it's not amazing, but statistically odd, out of all my seven aunties, None of them can cook quite like this, right? I know, I know, I know. They're good, They're, they, they always made a hospitable meal. It was always great, we were always welcome, but uh, it wasn't quite as soulful as this. But it wasn't just about the food, right? We came together and we celebrated. And I remember um, just the, the laughter and the stories and just experiencing life together. I remember even as a young kid, right, they had, we didn't just have a kid's table, we had like a kid's room down the hall, right? Because there were so many of us and then, you know, mac and cheese is on the ceiling and we're getting a little rowdy. Wait, mac and cheese on the ceiling? <laughs> well, you know, it's a kid's room. What are you going to do, okay. right? So that was only after we ran out of ketchup, right? And then, oh, you know, okay. that's how it goes. But, um, and then, but I remember being with the kids, I remember hearing the parents getting rowdy. And I just remember walking down the hallway and I remember looking through the door and I remember my parents just laughing hysterically. And I don't even know what they were laughing about, but it was like this idea that they could have such an amazing time with their family. And we had that every other week for a long time growing up, and it's such an amazing memory of that family coming together and celebrating. You know, the food was a reason to get together, but the family and the experience, like, that's the great memory. So it was, it was a lot of fun, and I, I really enjoyed that. But I don't know, my family, especially that side, they got a little feisty, right? When all the siblings got together, they, right? Not necessarily <laughs> arguing, but the volume goes up a little bit, right? But what about you guys? Did you, what were your families like uh, when they got together? Same thing, it would be very loud, and it would be a very intense game of Uno. Ooh, that, yeah, that's that's yeah, that can get, that's careful, yeah. That's, that a, that's a fighting game, Yes. Yeah, that could sure. make Nana and the grandson, you know, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Yeah, for me, my family, I mean, I think we're kind of all on the same page, very rowdy, and if it's Christmas, that means it's a basketball game, so they're like yelling at each other about what team's gonna win, and it's most often my mom's side, and we always have a joke, like, they don't talk at a normal level, it's yeah. like screaming is normal, yeah. so. Why is everybody yelling? Yeah, why is everybody yelling? Yes. But I love it, it's, it's, it kind of, brings the, the year together, you know, kind of to, to, to close the year, to be with my family and to enjoy them, be loud and crazy, and to have obviously some good food too. Yeah, it feels like home, right? That level, that yeah, volume, yes. you're, not, you're not having a celebration unless, right, the, the, everyone's there and excited and a little bit rowdy. So as we're talking about celebration and party, you know, obviously that means it's gonna be guests and, you know, let's be real, sometimes we don't always get along with our family and there's always that one person that you may think about like, I don't know if I want to go if they're there. So um, could you just like tell me about when it comes to your family celebrations, like who's invited, you know, is it welcome? Like what, what happens? Right, so with every family, there is drama, <laughs> but everyone's invited. You know, the food brings everyone together. So even if you are, you know, upset with your aunt, but for some reason, once we all get together and we're laughing, we're talking, we're eating, we're, you know, coming together, it's like everything is is back to normal. Like everybody's family, everybody forgot about why we're mad at each other because that food is there and that love is there. So food is the reason everyone is come together. So everyone's invited, everyone comes. It's almost like the food is like that redemption, you know? Yes. Like it just, it, you just put your, all your differences aside and you're able to come together and have a meal together. What about you, Alan? 
Well, I gotta be like growing up, I think my family, um, we were just a big family. So we did a lot of family stuff in a positive way. Um, but I think um, when I met my wife and I started hanging out with her family, their family wasn't quite as, as large, but what I saw was they invited absolutely everyone, right? Anyone was invited, friends, people, and you know, her family, like, like lots of others, there was, there's, there's conflict, right? Sometimes there's tension and, and feelings are hurt, and, um, but they were able to work through that, and when I came in the picture, what I saw was the story of a redeemed family, right, who had worked through some hard times and they had come back together and it was really, it was cool, it was encouraging, even though we go through things like, you know, your guys' families have, um, you know, we can come back together and we can celebrate together. And, and when I think of everyone is welcome, I definitely think of that side of the family um, and the, the, the celebrations that we've had and all the, you never know who's gonna be there, right? Oh, this is so-and-so from, you know, I met them here, here, this one's from, from this group or that, and it's always such a fun and encouraging thing. And what happens is you connect with these people and you learn like, hey, these are actually pretty cool people, right? Maybe people I wouldn't have known otherwise. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool example of, of just being open and, and celebrating with anyone. So. Um, but I was, I was also thinking, um, I can tell you put a lot of like love and care into this. You know, you're passionate when you talk about it. Um, you know, do, when you're when you're cooking this for other people, um, how does it make you? Or how do you feel? And are you cooking for yourself? Are you excited? Are you? Is it anticipation? Or what's it feel like making a dish like this? It's very exciting, especially because my mom passed it on to me, mm -hmm. and it's something that I can always like cherish and carry. Even you know when she's passed on, everybody will remember this mac and cheese. So they'll know, like, I'll this remember this mac and cheese. A piece <laughs> of my mom's. This was a piece of her love, and she passed on this love to me. So it's really, really important. That's to me cool. That that's I, really yeah, that I, I can make it. Sure. That's good. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. I think like, yeah, relating family to food and love is just. I mean, it's, I think that's what soul is, right? Yes. Like that. That's what soul food is. is. And so to be able to pass that on and create that legacy, and then also be reminded of home and welcoming yeah. back. So. Yeah. It's, yeah, you're sharing the love through the food, right? And I, I was thinking. Um, so my wife, I just, you know, she's a good cook. She's a great cook, right? I love my wife's cooking, but she really loves to bake. And my daughters love to bake too. So they end up, they like to make lots of desserts and these recipes that they'll find online and they'll put, you know, cookies and it calls for three marshmallows, but they'll put, you know, 20 in there and it's a big, amazing oh, yes. sugar dessert, right? And then, dad, 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 come here, come here, come here. And then they want to watch me eat this, right? It's not, they don't want to, they want to, they cut the piece out and they're like, dad, try this. And then, you know, okay. And I try it and they're so excited. What did you think? What did you think? I'm like, well, it's like three bars of chocolate, 27 marshmallows. <laughs> of course I love it, right? This is amazing. What a, this is an incredible thing. But they put love into that baking, waiting for excitement to watch me eat it, right? And that's that just reminding me of even uh, the, the meal that you prepare, right? You, that love, it translates into the food and it does, it definitely makes us feel special and appreciated, right? Totally. Yes. It reminds me of my first time when I actually made it and just seeing my mom's eyes like light up when she tasted it because it was like, oh, you did it. You, you did it. It's right. spot it. on. Yeah. You did it. You got it. And that was just like the most amazing thing for me. That is so cool. And you know, if you ever want to, you know, keep that recipe going, you, I'm going to invite, you can come over to my house. You can teach my daughters and my wife how to cook something. Anytime. Any, Anytime. There we go. <laughs> you can enjoy it. Anytime, right? This is really good. But um, I don't know, Sydney, what, what are your thoughts on, on the food? You've had a little time to, to nibble on anything stand out or do you love it all? Um, yeah, it's really good. I mean, yeah, the mac and cheese is amazing. I mean, I think that is like, this is my love language here is yes. mac and cheese. If you want to love me well, feed me mac and cheese. So it's, it's been really, really great. Um, yeah, just kind of reminding me of home and my culture and stuff. So this has been, this has been really awesome. It's been good. And yeah, for me, I don't know if it's because you told me the secret of the onion, but I'm tasting a good little onion vibe and I can definitely get all three flavors of cheese. I think maybe five would be too much. I think you got the right, this is the perfect yes. concoction right here. I've been dibbling on the ribs pretty good too, but I gotta say the mac and cheese is where it's at. It's, it's, it's super good. So all this has been absolutely amazing. And before I get my hands all dirty and start smashing that rib, uh, I just wanted to officially thank you so much for cooking this and thank you for sharing about your mom and um, all that that goes, but I'm ready to, I'm ready to keep chowing down.
honestly, that was so much fun. And you know what? I got to admit, the food was, in fact, as good as it looked. It was, it was amazing. And before we get too far into our teaching today, I just want to give a shout out to Nisha, right? So wherever you're at, give a little clap up. Nisha did an amazing job cooking some really good food, and, and it was fantastic. And then now, Sydney here, she didn't know I was going to do this, but I'm going to embarrass her too. I want to thank Sydney for hanging out with us um, in the Culture Kitchen and also today. And I, I'm encouraged because it was only a year ago that she was uh, in Leadership College, right? Graduated Leadership College, and now she's here with us today helping unpack some of the stuff. And it's really, now don't be intimidated. If you do Leadership College, it doesn't mean you're going to have to do this, right? But Sydney's taking some next steps, and we're proud of her, and, and, and it's going to be some great stuff today. So, like you figured out, we are unpacking this idea of a celebration meal, right? And we talked about that a little bit yesterday, and it's this idea of coming together around food and celebrating. And me personally, I love food, right? That's not a secret. And I love celebrating, so when you put the two together, I, I mean, that's that's it. And, and when I get that invitation to, the cel to celebrate one of these parties, man, I mark the calendar and I am ready to go. But I thought it would be fun today to kind of help you guys start thinking through this. I thought it'd be fun to show a couple pictures of some celebrations, right? Yeah. So, I'm gonna encourage you, so if you're at home watching on your couch, just go, just shout it out. If you know what this is and you shout it out before the guy next to you, you win. Type it in the comments, see if you can figure these out. Sydney's gonna, she's gonna play along also and she's gonna try to figure these out. And so, you know, I'm gonna start with a, a little bit of a softball, but let's see if you can figure out what kind of celebration this is. Okay, I think the outfit kind of gives it away. So I'm, I'm gonna go with wedding. All right, that was, I don't know if you were faster than Sydney, but right there, we might have <laughs> given it away with a big wedding Christian, but it's, it's quite a celebration. This one, um, this, this might be uh, some low-hanging fruit also, but um, come on now. And uh, I gotta say, this isn't actually me. That's not that's not me as a bit. I know what you're thinking, but. Um, I think I'm gonna do a birthday party for 500. That's right, birthday, okay, she's, she's got it. That one, that was pretty good. But uh, I mean, if you're a parent, when you've made it one year, right, you are celebrating, right? Trust me, it's a big accomplishment. You can see it on her face and baby, he doesn't know, but he's about to smash some cake. So he's excited too. And I got just a few more real quick. This one's a little harder, right? First birthday. All right, Ooh. Sydney, what do you think? Okay, so white dress, not wedding. It's not a wedding. I either think it's like like a bat mitzvah or a quinceanera, possibly. It's a quinceanera. There we go. She's, she's pretty, so have you ever been? I it's, have. Oh, They're super fun. Go. They know how to party. That's right. Lots of culture, time. lots of good food, lots of party, right? So I haven't been to one, but I've got some young girls and I'm hoping to get invited someday because it looks like a ton of fun. And then this is this is our last one here. Um. Okay, I think they play a sport. So maybe they just won a game or it's like a sports banquet possibly. Yeah, so we'll say, you know, after the big game, right? The celebration after the big game. So it doesn't matter here. Like maybe you just won. Maybe you just, maybe this guy just dropped the ball and lost the whole game. But it doesn't matter because when you have that Shakey's pizza, you you forget about it, right? It's the idea of celebrating. And there's another celebration going on behind, and that's with the dads because the baseball game has finally ended, right? So there's, this is multifaceted. There's a lot of celebrating that goes on. But hopefully that gets you guys um, kind of thinking through the idea of celebration, right? And we love to celebrate. And I would even say that God designed us for community and celebrating together. And we see a lot in the Bible. We actually see Jesus. He, he hangs out. He, he goes to a lot of meals and celebrations, but he actually talks about them quite a bit too. So today we're going to focus on in one chapter in Luke. So Luke chapter 15. And now what's cool about this chapter is Jesus doesn't tell about one celebration or two, but he actually talks about three celebrations in one chapter, right? Just in Luke 15. We don't have time to go through all of them today, so we're gonna we're gonna hover over the first two, but um, let me help you guys um, get started here. But the first story we hear about is the idea of the lost sheep. So some of you might remember this story. If you hadn't, I encourage you guys to go back and read in Luke. But we hear about a man who lost his sheep, and it's, you know, doesn't he leave the 99 to go out and find the one, right? And when he finds it, what does he do? He gets his friends and neighbors and he celebrates, right? Something was lost and it's found. So we celebrate, right? It's an amazing celebration. And then that's verse seven, right? Check this out. Eight through 10, Jesus tells another story about a woman who lost one of her 10 silver coins, right? She lost it in her house. She can't find it. She lights the lamp. She looks all around, right? She's looking around her apartment. She can't find it, but she does. And when she finds it, what does she do, right? She celebrates, she goes, she gets her friends and her neighbors, right? This once was lost, it's found, I found my coin. Sydney's looking at me like I'm crazy. So coins aren't that relatable right now, right? Unless, I, no. I don't know. 
But maybe a good example is like maybe you lost, you've ever lost your remote control. Has ever happened to you? Yes. Yeah. So you, 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 maybe you've been in your apartment or your house, you lose your remote control and you look, you turn your light on and you look in the same three spots like 10 times, right? And then when you finally find it, right, it's fine that you found it under the cabinet. What happens? You grab the remote, right? And you celebrate. Like, I, guys, I found the remote, right? For me, I, kids, look, your father, I found the remote. We can binge watch Netflix again. It's a celebration, right? By yourself, it's good, but with everyone around you, it's great. So celebrations, um, they're a lot of fun, right? And then the third celebration we see in Luke 15 is the story of a prodigal son. Now, some of you are like, your ears just perked up because this, this is a good story, right? I'd say this is my favorite story in the chapter. And it's another story about something that's lost and then found, right? But this story's got a little bit of twist in the end because a celebration happens, but because of someone's kind of jaded perspective, and maybe a little bit of their pride, someone actually misses out on this celebration. So it's a great story, and Sydney's going to start us out, um, helping us unpack that a little bit. So, Sydney? Yeah, so Luke 15, uh, verses 11 32, uh, we talk about the two sons and their father. Um, and it could be a familiar story to you. If not, we're going to give you a full rundown. And so it starts off with the younger son. And basically, he asked his father to give me my estate, uh, which is kind of not super common. I mean, it would be almost as if, you know, our, we went to our parents and said, hey, you know, before you die, I would like my I would like whatever you have in the will for me or my inheritance. And so this was actually it was uncommon. It was a kind of a big deal um, because it, when the father divides his estate, he divides up his life and his livelihood and who he is. And that's in this culture, that's everything. You know, you are identified by your land. Um, and when you lose your land, you essentially lose yourself. So if the father is not retiring, he's still living, he would be essentially losing a lot of himself. But the father agrees um, and he divides up the estate between the younger and the older brother. And that's that. And so not even a few days later, the younger son, he gets his estate and scripture says that he decides to leave. He, it says he uses money on wild living, which, you know, we can imagine what that would be, but basically he goes, he goes crazy. He bounces and it's like, it's my own life now. Um, but sometimes good things come to an end and the son ends up running out of money. And to make things worse in verse 14, it says, after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country and he, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to, to the fields to feed pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. And if you know anything about Moses' law or Jewish culture, like dealing with pigs is a huge no-no. I mean, you couldn't even eat them. You weren't supposed to sacrifice them, let alone touch them. So the fact that this younger brother is out there working with these pigs and is so hungry, so desperate to want their food, um, this is a low. He's, he's kind of lost everything. Um, but then something happens and the younger son comes to the realization that he's better off at home, that the servants at his home are treated better than how he's living now. And um, he kind of reflects on the weight of what he's done. And he plans to tell his father, it says in verse 18, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So the younger son, like, like I said, he's, he's realizing the weight of his sin that he is going back home and he's like, I won't even identify as your son. I will identify as something less than just so that you can take me back. Um, and as he's journeying on in the distance, his father sees him. And his father's filled with so much compassion, so much love that he disregards that take me as a servant thing. He just, he welcomes him back home and he calls for a celebration and he brings out like the best for his son. It says that they get the fattened calf and the robe. And I mean, like it's, it's a huge party. Uh, and in verse 24, it says, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. So, and that's amazing, right? And now we get into the second son, the older son, which we don't usually hear a lot about. Um, but this is when the older son, he actually is 
been faithful. He's been doing the right things. He's actually on the fields now working for his father. And he gets word from the servant that his younger brother, the one who's made the mistakes, who's done the wrong, who's sinned against his father is back and they're throwing this party for him. And when he hears that, he becomes angry because he says he, he's never received any kind of celebration like this. So much anger to the point there, he doesn't even wanna be a part of the party. And his father has to beg him to come to the party. And in verse 29, he's so adamant, he says, but he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. Like he's, he's comparing, you know, their, their journeys and their walks. So I've done all of this good for you and I've never even had any of this. And the father's response is, is interesting. He says, you know, everything I have is, is already yours. Like there was no need for him to be worried or even insecure in the blessings that already had his name on it. But when somebody returns back home, when my son returns back home, who has been far away from me, then we all can bring in that joy and celebrate that joy. So what does that mean for us? And I'm going to transition over to Alan so we can kind of talk about those three characters. Awesome. Thanks. Well, um, yeah, we're going to unpack those three characters a little bit more. But before we do, I think it's worth mentioning. Um, it's always interesting to me that, to see how Jesus seems to always know who's listening, right? And, you know, if he's talking to the farmers, he's, you know, hey, let me tell you about a story about the good soil or the seed that falls, you know, here or there. And, hey, you guys like to fish? You know, what about being a fisher's of men, right? It's like he relates to the audience so well. And I think um, in this story, it's worth mentioning that he's surrounded by people. And there's kind of two groups of people. And I'm going to plant a seed here and, and kind of mention who they were. But there's the tax collectors and the sinners. And then there's the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, right? So there's two groups that are that are here kind of listening to this parable. And I think, uh, you know, you guys might be able to connect some dots as we start to unpack this. But let me start with the younger brother, right? And I think um, everybody Everybody loves, I don't know if loves is the right term, but everybody enjoys the idea of this younger brother, right? He's so relatable. It's such an amazing, romantic story of, of just amazing love from a father, right? Like Sydney told us, he, he, he got a share of the estate, right? And like she said, it didn't normally happen until the father was dead. So basically, I wish you were dead. I want your stuff. And, and how does he repay the father? He goes out and he squanders it all, right? He goes out and he spends, he spends everything and he makes a mess out of everything, right? And now what happens is, is when he says, I want your stuff, and he does this, he's, he's far from the father, right? And this son, he wants control of the father, but he's doing it by taking control of his stuff, right? The father gives him everything, and he's basically saying, I can do a better job with this. I, I, I can do this by myself, right? And he, he squanders it, right? He, he's far away from God. And he makes a lot of decisions where, you know, they're not that great. And this younger brother, he, he kind of represents... I would say a more traditional view of sin, right? And maybe some of you have, have been there. Maybe you've been far from God. Maybe you know someone right now. Maybe you have a sibling or a son um, who's, who's far or in a faraway land. And when you look at them, you think, yeah, that's, that's sin, right? Like that's, that's definitely sin, right? And, and we see in this story that the brother, he tried to figure it out himself, but we all know how that turns out, right? And again, most of us think of this brother when we think of this story and that amazing love of the father when he returns. So this brother helps show us that there's nothing we can do to separate us from the love of God, right? There's, there's nothing we can do. He had some pretty aggressive sin that we hear, you know, uh, uh, prostitutes, self-indulgence, self-discovery, all these things, right? But none of those, those mistakes could separate him from the love of the Father, right? And it's it's an amazing redemption story, and it's so cool, and it's 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 fun to remember and think back on. So I think a lot of times we do think of the younger brother first, but there's there's a second brother, right? And that's the older brother, and he's often overlooked because he's one he's not well. Sometimes older brothers get overlooked, right? It's all about the younger brother, but this time um, he's also a very important important part of the story. And when he confronts the dad, and he says, you know what's going on here, right? The celebration has happened, the son, he comes back, he confronts the dad, he says, you know, your son has returned, right? He's mad, even his language, like your son, it's not my brother, it's your son. He returned, and what did you do? 
you gave him the fatted calf, right? Like a little bit like Sydney talked about. It's like that idea that you took that calf, we saved that for celebrations, right? How dare you celebrate my little brother? How dare you make a celebration feast? How dare you cook some soul food, right? How dare you throw a party? I bet there's mac and cheese some at the party, cheese, right? Some mac and cheese, yeah. Yeah, that party was going on. And what we saw in that verse 29, he was so mad. All these years I've been slaving for you and I never disobeyed your orders, right? You never even gave me a goat. But that son of yours, right? That's not my brother, that son, he squandered it all, right? Prostitutes all of it and he came home and you killed the calf for him, right? Basically he's saying, all these years I've been slaving for you. Here's the reasons I reject your decision, right? Because I'm always right, I know better. I'm the, I, I, I've earned this, right? I'm the perfect son. And it's not, it's not his um, goodness or it's not his sin that keeps him away from the father, it's actually his righteousness, right? Just like the other brother, he's trying to control the father, but he does it in a different way. He does it by doing it everything right. This brother, right, he wanted the father's things too, but instead of being bad, right, he did it by being good, by obeying. I can, uh, by obeying, I can control the father and the father's things by earning this, right? I earned my way in. I should have some say in this, right? Especially if you're gonna mess with my food, right? Don't mess with my food. I earned, I helped you earn that food. And at the party, like we heard, that brother, he publicly humiliates the father, right? He abandoned the party. So maybe it's like, maybe you've been to a wedding and there's been some family drama. There's people outside. They don't, they don't like that the wedding's going on, but there's a ruckus. It's rowdy, right? He's causing a scene. I think that's what's going on here. That younger brother, he's outside. He's defiant. He's mad, right? He's causing a fuss. I won't be a part of this celebration. I won't be a part of this party. Your son, right? How dare you take him back? And then what does the father do? Right? I think he does the unexpected here. He leaves the party, he goes out there, he has a conversation with that son, and he invites him in. Right? I still want you in the feast. Right? I still have a seat for you at the table. It's, it's, I, don't, you know, I don't care what you've done, you made a seat, it's, it doesn't matter, there's a seat for you now. But here's the thing, there's always been a seat for you. I've always loved you, you've always been open hands, open doors, open tables, open macaroni and cheese piles, right? That's always been there for you, right? It's always been there. And then what happens? Jesus ends the parable, right? That's it, it's over, right? He, he, he runs, he goes outside to the sun and we're like, oh. But I think what happens here at the end of the story, the bad one is saved and the good one is lost, right? He's left outside the celebration. I would even say, right, he blew it. Right? And he, he was not lost in spite of his goodness, he was lost because of it. And I think even for ourselves, sometimes it's easy to think, if I'm a good person, if I'm morally responsible, I've done X, Y, and Z, I kinda deserve this. I, I should be in control of, of my destiny or this or that, and I don't actually need, I don't actually need this, right? And even when things are going really well, we can kinda drift away and feel like we can do it on our own and, and earn our way into control, right? Basically, the older brother thinks, I'm here, right, with the father because I deserve it. That younger brother, he was there eating the pig stuff because that's what he deserves, right? He, he deserves it. But in reality, neither one of them deserve it. And what we see here with the older brother is that sometimes uh, religious people obey God to get things, right? I'll do this, I'll get this. But Jesus followers, right, when you're following Jesus, you obey God to get to know him for that relationship, right? Sometimes I think it's the good people who are in and the bad people who are out. But what we see in this story is Jesus kind of flips the script, right? It's the humble who are in, it's the proud who are out. Those of you who need God's grace, you're in, right? And if you feel, if you don't need God's grace, if that's what you think, that, that's a choice, right? Then the, the humble are in, maybe the proud are out, right? And I do have some good news, right? There's, God has enough grace for all of us, unconditionally, right? He has enough love for all of us, right? He's ready to lavish us with love. But that older brother, he reminds us that we don't make ourselves holy by changing our behavior or doing things right, right? We're not holy because of what we've done and we can't earn that, right? You make yourself holy by accepting the grace of God and letting it wash away your sins, right? It's a gift from God, right? That's a step into being restored with Jesus is accepting that gift. And then with the help of the Holy Spirit, 
and the power of God's word, when you're surrounded and connected in a community of believers, then the process starts, right? We change the way we think, we change the way we respond, and we live as a family, not because we're trying to earn something, but it's out of that gratitude for love, right? That amazing grace that God has given us because of that, we love each other and we, we spend time together and we care about each other. It's the perfect place for imperfect people, right? It's not the perfect place for perfect people, right? It's, 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 un, it's an unconditional love, right? And, that, and that's what we're seeing here. And I think what we see is none of us deserve it, right? That's what we talked about, whether you're, no matter what you've done, whether you're, you tried to earn your way in or you've been really far from God, anywhere on that spectrum, you know, we're learning through this story that we need the love, the, the love and the step of the father, right? And that's where the, the father comes into the story. So we see the father, uh, and I, I wanna back up and say, I think sometimes some of us might have a hard time with the idea of a loving father, right? Maybe you didn't have a great relationship with your dad. Maybe you didn't have a dad in the picture. Maybe it's a little bit it's skewed. I think Jesus is trying to level set in this parable and he's trying to help us understand what the love of a father, what does that actually feel like? What does that look like? When I say a loving father, here's what I mean. Right? Remember when that younger son returned? It's like Sydney talked about. He ran to him. He ran. He lifted his robe up and he ran out to him. He didn't wait for the uh, excuse, you know, oh, take me back for these reasons. No, it was unconditional. He lavished his love upon him. He put a robe on him. He put the ring on his finger. You know, you, you have your shoes back. I want to restore your dignity. And he lavishes this boy with love, not because of what the boy was going to say, but because he loved the boy, right? The boy came back. But here's what's interesting. In this story, the father actually reaches out to, to both of the brothers, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we think more about that younger brother, but he reaches out to the older brother too. He leaves the party and goes out to the older brother. He's calling that older brother to lean in, right? Let go, come in, the celebration is happening. Please don't miss it because of your pride, right? Don't miss it because you think you've earned it. Don't miss it because you don't agree. There's a celebration going on and I want you here. I want you to come home. I want you to be inside the party, right? And what happens, he misses it, right? Because of his, his, his pride and his jaded perspective, he blew it completely, right? It's like I was saying, sometimes we struggle with the idea of a father, right? But the father in this story, does it sound like you have to earn your love? Does it sound like there's something you can do to separate you, or these boys can do to separate themselves from the love of the Father? And if in fact, this is Jesus trying to give us a snapshot of the Father in heaven, right? Is there something we can do to separate us from the love of the Father, right? Is there something we have to do to earn the love of the Father? You know, does it sound like he's making it hard to come home, right? Does it sound like it's based on our accomplishments, right? How does the Father see you? Does he only think about your past or does he dream about your future, right? And when the father comes to you with open arms, do you see him as a loving father? And then the next question would be, you know, how do you respond to that love? And it, it's incredible. So I, I told Cindy, I like this story. This, it's an incredible story. There's a lot of really good stuff here. Um, but cindy has got a few more takeaways that she'd love to share with us as well. Yes, the story of forgiveness and love and redemption and compassion uh, it's incredible. And we just want to leave you with just a few thoughts on um, some takeaways of this story. And like Alan was saying, you know, with the older brother and having that checkbox and trying to do right and do everything, we look, have to look at our motives as well, is that for the first takeaway is that we serve out of an overflow of a relationship, not out of an obligation to get things from God. I think sometimes religion will tell us that we have to do this and do that to earn God's love. But from the story, there's absolutely nothing that either brother could have done to make him welcome the younger brother back and also run after the older brother when he's decided to, to be away from the celebration. It is out of that love that God freely gives is why we serve, not serve to get love. And the second takeaway is God's love is bigger than your greatest mistake. Amen. I'm just going to amen that. That's good, I love that takeaway. <laughs> and then what's uh, the verse Psalms 85 verse 2. You forgave the guilt of your people. Yes, you have covered 
all of their sins. When we make mistakes, when we have regrets, we have experiences that we don't like, when we have failures, there's absolutely nothing that could keep you from God. Absolutely nothing. And coming, coming home to him, coming back to yourself, you won't hear, I told you so, especially if the father is a reflection of our father in heaven, that no matter what it is, no mistake, it's God's love is there for you if you would accept it. And lastly, all are welcome to the table with verse Luke 15, seven, says, in the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. Church, I want you to know that all of us are welcome to God's table. Again, doesn't matter your past and how Alan said, God's not, not he's not focused on your past. He's, he's dreaming of your future. Would you dream with him? Would you step into that? Would you lean into that? And when you lean into that, when you see your brothers and sisters who may be disconnected, may be completely far turned away from God for, for whatever reason, hurt, whatever it is, that we put our pride aside and we would forgive and have compassion for them and welcome them back. Just as the heavens, like it says the verse, the heavens will rejoice. Because there's joy in it for, for all of us, all parties. So in that, what happens to someone who is far from God and we act like the older brothers in our church? Like God kind of gives us two options, the older brother or the father prideful, insecure, or loving, forgiving, ready to go on the journey with you. And maybe that's, may, maybe you're one of those today, but you can step into that love for yourself and also for others. Because when the love of God and the power of God is in us, like we, we attract those people. And so if we can, and so if we can be kind, if we can love those, if we can say, I'm coming alongside of you because God did it for us and there's nothing that we could have done. We can't check a box. We can't do, we can do absolutely nothing. And then we don't, we don't change our lives to earn forgiveness. Out of gratitude, we change the way that we live. We don't change in order to be accepted by God. We're just accepted. So maybe today that's you and you're feeling disconnected, you're feeling far from God. You may even already go to church and just life has happened, but God's right there to welcome you back, to run, to love on you, to give you that fattened calf or that macaroni and cheese or whatever it is. And the church, and we're here for you as well. So would you step into that? Because God has so much good for you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are and that you are a loving and compassionate Father, that no matter what our past looks like, our mistakes, our regrets, that you, that you run to us with open arms, that you care about the 99 and you care about the one. God, there's nothing that we could have done to earn this, and so we thank you for that. God, I pray over our church as we move into the next parts of our lives and we're able to take on that love of the Father. It's in your name we pray, amen. We hope you enjoyed our time together today. You can stay connected with us by following us on all of our social media channels and by downloading the CityLine app. Thank you and we'll see you guys next week.